In this lecture snippet, I'd like to talk about a very popular tool for file carving called Foremost. And it's been around since the early 2000s. And the last development that we see on it is in 2008. So it's not actively being updated at this moment, but it's still a very popular tool. It is not installed by default on Ubuntu. So what we'll need to do is go to the terminal and we're going to need to install this utility. So basically the command is just sudo the app dash get install and then foremost and we're going to go need ahead and type in the password for the root user and it's going to go through the process of installing it. It is a small application so it should only take a few minutes here or a few seconds to actually get installed and it'll be up and running and I'm almost there now. So once it's installed what I'm going to do is go to the man page and that's going to tell us so I'm going to do man for most and I'll maximize this. This will tell us a lot of information about how to actually use this application. And there are three options that I use with the foremost on most occasions. The dash T option is going to be to define the type. And if you look here, there's a lot of different types we can use, like JPEGs, GIFs, PNGs, um, bitmaps, and the list just keeps going on through here. And so that's the dash T option. I also like to use the dash I option, which is a required one to, for the input file that we're actually going to be searching, and the dash O option for the output directory. And if you look through this list, you can see there's quite a few different options. You've got the images up top, you can see there's some applications, you can see that there's movies, there's audio files, there's PDFs. The OLEs are going to be for Office documents, and so are the DOC. And then you can see there's zipped files and compressed files and HTMLs and C++ or C code, as well as uh, if we don't run the dash T option, it will look for all of these types of files. So these are some of the default uh, or basically the, the options that are available that we have and the dash I, the dash T, and the dash O options are ones that I, I always use whenever I use the actual command. I'm going to go ahead and hit Q to quit out of that and we'll actually show you how to run this. So I'm going to bring, go ahead and restore this down and I am going to extract information out of this image that I have for my flash drive that's on my desktop. So what I'll do is just, just navigate over to the desktop so that I'm working in that current directory and the command is very simple just foremost I'm going to use the dash T option here to define the types that I'm going to look for and so if I want to look for multiple things I would type in like JPEG uh, JPG and I would do a comma to separate them and do something like PNG and there's no spaces between those so all the types that we have we need to look at having no spaces there and I could search for some of those image files that I have listed here again the dash O option is for the output directory and so I'm going to use a dash O and I'm just going to call this one flash output and then I'm going to use also the dash I option to tell it which file to actually search for. So I'll use the dash I and I'm going to go ahead and type in flash drive.img and that is the image file that's listed right there. I'll go ahead and hit enter and it's going to go through the process and you can see that the flash output folder has been created and they use little asterisks to basically do as a timeline and kind of go through while it's processing for you so that it, you know that it's working. And it will run through this 2 gig flash drive image that I have here and I'll come back to the video once it's done. Alright, so the application is finished now and I'm going to go ahead and take a quick look at this flash output folder to see what actually happened. And what I'm going to have in here is this audit TXT file which is going to be good for record keeping of what actually happened. But you'll notice that it separated my file types based on a, in a folder. So all the GIFs were found and you can see they're listed all the GIFs here. I will point out one thing, this is a file carving tool so it's not looking at the metadata. It's really going to be looking at the files and then it's going to number these files based on how they found them. So um, you'll notice that none of these files here are actually real file names that I would have had in my operating system because they were carved out rather than found from the metadata information. So you can see that I've got the JPEGs all listed here and you will also notice you may find some files that of course the pictures don't look actually like they did on the hard drive because there may be partial parts of a file and so forth like this one right here if I open this one up you'll notice I don't have the full image and it's kind of distorted because it found part of a picture and so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that one there but it did find a lot of other photos that was able to completely rebuild for me I'm going to go back here to the flash output folder and I want to look at and examine this audit.txt file which is kind of an important file because it actually tells you where it found everything as it went through the process with the offsets on where it found it on the hard drive and if I scroll down here 
all the way to the bottom. It'll even tell you how many files that were extracted out of there. So I had 346 files extracted, 63 were JPEG, 137 were PNG, and 146 were GIFs. So it, it gives you a good record of what actually happened when you ran the command. And so I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Now a common thing that I see with most people is they try to rerun it again, the same command, and maybe go to the same output folder. If I hit enter now, I'm getting it an error. And the reason for that is because your output folder needs to be empty. And the flash output folder currently has stuff in it. And that's because it's all time stamped. And of course, you can look here and read this, and it says that we could run that same folder, but we'd have to run it with a dash capital T option. And I typically don't do that. What I would do is just have another output folder. So make sure that your output folder is empty or use a brand new output folder within your command, just as a word of advice. Now this command can also be done on hard drives or partitions rather than an image file. And in forensics, if it's public or criminal forensics, you, you're probably not going to be wanting to do that on the actual original drive, but maybe a backup drive um, or the backup image. And in this case, I'm doing it because I just want to show you that you can recover from an actual hard drive itself or a partition. So I'm going to run sudo fdisk dash L to look to see which hard drive it is that I want to work with. And I'm going to look for this Windows hard drive that I have here. And you can see it's listed as SDB and the partition is the DEV SDB1. And um, I'm going to go ahead and look to extract information or carve information out of this partition itself, this DEV SDB1. So I'm going to go ahead now and type in just clear. So I'm going to go ahead and use the command sudo, and I need to do sudo in front because I'm going to actually be working with the device itself. So we'll then do foremost, and I'm going to go ahead now and do some of these options. So I've got the dash T option for the type, and this time we'll go ahead and do some, let's see, zip, and I'll do doc, and maybe pdf. And so then those are some of the options that I'm going to work with there as far as extracting or carving out. I'm going to use the dash O option for the output folder, and I'll just call this one NTFS output. And then I'll use the dash I option, and the dash I option will be for the input file. So this one's going to be the forward slash DEV forward slash SD, and we'll say B1 for partition 1. And I'll go ahead and hit enter, and it's going to go ahead and begin processing for me all of the files and carving out all of the files from this particular partition that I have. And so it's going to run for a while. It is on an actual 60 gig hard drive. Whenever I run a hard drive, it usually does take a little bit longer for it to run rather than an image file. So it's going to take up a little bit of time, but when we're done, it'll be completely extracted for us. All right, so my computer is now finished with the actual file carving. And I want to point out, whenever I run the zip file type, I'll notice it looks like I have a lot of garbage, and that's something that just is normal. Every time I run the zip file, it seems to be like that. So if you have a zip file type, expect to see something like that. Oh, it's in the process of actually carving. Um, once I look over here, I'll notice that the NTFS output folder, it is locked because I ran this command as sudo, so I will need to change it. So I'll just do sudo chmod the dash capital R, so it's recursive and 777 and then NTFS output. And after I run this, looks like I need the password again. After I run this, it'll actually take off the permissions for just the root user and make it so that everybody has accessibility to it. And you can see I have a zip folder here and then all the zip files that were extracted out of here as well as my audit TXT. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll just say to display this file that I ran it and I'm going to scroll down and you can see that 14 files have been extracted uh, that were zipped files and so it went through and carved things for me based on what I was looking for and the command that I looked for was also PDFs and docs and it did not find any of those particular file types throughout my flash drive or throughout my hard drive and so this is using Foremost as a file carving tool within Ubuntu Linux.